When Harriet Beecher Stowe met Abraham Lincoln in 1862, he is said to have exclaimed, so you're the little lady who started this great war. Harriet, who had moved from New England with her family, lived in Cincinnati for nearly 20 years. It is here, just miles away from the slave state of Kentucky, that Harriet was exposed to the cruelties of slavery and met the people whose lives later inspired her to write her monumental work, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Today, the Beecher Home is a museum open to the public. Harriet came to Cincinnati in 1832 at the age of 21. Um, her father had taken the job as president of Lane Seminary. It was begun to serve the West in terms of training ministers and sent Lyman Beecher out here as president to establish this institution. This house was built for the Beechers. She lived here when she was waiting for her first children who were twins to be born. Lyman Beecher was a man of conviction. His anti-slavery sentiments and belief in education had a great impact on his children, all of whom received an education. Harriet, along with her sister Catherine, first began her career as a teacher. Harriet's career spanned many, many years. She wrote over 30 novels during her lifetime. She wrote for almost 20 years before Uncle Tom's Cabin. She wrote to help supplement her husband's income as a professor. When she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, she had been asked by relatives if she would write something in response to the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. It was first published in 1851 in serial form. In the following year, in 1852, it was published as a hardback novel. Much of Uncle Tom's Cabin was inspired by real people and events in and around Cincinnati. Harriet likely heard the story that would later inspire her Eliza character while on a family visit at the home of the Presbyterian abolitionist John Rankin in Ripley, Ohio. I'm reminded of the most important incident that ever took place in Ripley during all the years of the activities of the abolition group. Strange as it may seem, no one placed any importance in the episode when it occurred because we did not know it was in the mind of Harry Beecher Stowe. I'm referring to the incident of Eliza with her babe and her arms crossing on ice, chased by dogs to the water's edge. I've told this story directly from Reverend John Rankin to whom Eliza told her story within the hour after she made the crossing as she sat by his fireside in his hilltop home. John Parker. We believe there is a strong connection with the Beecher and the Rankin families. The Beechers were Presbyterians, the Rankins are Presbyterians. They share a lot of common interest and they're opposed to slavery. We do believe Harriet Beecher was a visitor in Ripley and in the surrounding area and heard John and Jean Rankin telling these various stories of aiding slaves in an escape. One story is the story of a slave woman, a young mother who has discovered that she's going to be sold away from this northern Kentucky farm. It's winter time, and so she's going to take this opportunity to attempt an escape. This slave and her small child make their way across the Ohio River, jumping from ice flow to ice flow. She makes it across the river. She's directed to the home of the Rankins. The Rankins take her in and get her on to the next station north. Later, when Harriet Beecher Stowe was living in the New England states, where she lived when she wrote what would become this bestseller novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, her character Eliza is based on the woman we just talked about. Living in Cincinnati helped Harriet uh, when she later wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. She knew many abolitionists because many of the students at Lane Seminary were abolitionists. So she would have talked to these students and she would have met people like the Rankins. Uncle Tom's Cabin is one, one of my least favorite books uh, in that it painted black people as being uh, childish, uh, 
inept uh, people to be sorry for. That's the way I saw it. It, in fact, made quite an impact on America when Harriet Beecher humanized the people who were uh, being exploited, being robbed of their personhood, being robbed of their labor. With her living in Cincinnati and coming a half day's uh, ride up river to see what was going on in Kentucky and to visit the Rankin family, she was able to give an account of the sale, the famous sale in Washington, Kentucky. She also heard stories and saw things on both sides of the river that gave her reason to then later on write the notes on Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was one of the most powerful documentations of factual do documentation of the abuses of people of color. And it set off a debate that continues to today about how bad slavery was or was not, but it forever helped change how we began to look at the exploitive use of free labor